Hey, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Well, after an eventful period of elections, during which Nigerian politics once again passed through a rigorous litmus test, the outcomes have been contested at various levels of the judiciary through the instrumentality of the special tribunal set up to entertain petitions from aggrieved parties. That, by the way, is not new. What seems to be new, however, is the way Nigerians have been reacting to the verdict of the presidential election petitions court, which a couple of weeks ago gave a ruling which, to say the least, hasn't gone down well with so many people. That ruling may have also set the tone for many similar situations across the states. Joining us now to look at this matter is Dr. Chima Naji, a lawyer, good governance advocate, and former governorship candidate in Enugu State, southeast of Nigeria. Good morning, Dr. Naji. Good to see you. A very good morning to you and um, your colleagues there, and a good morning to our viewers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let's um, uh, take a holistic look at um, where Nigeria is at the moment. Uh, yes, governance uh, is going on, but at the same time, uh, many aggrieved politicians, those who run for elections uh, at the presidential level, governorship level, and of course at the parliamentary level, uh, those who feel aggrieved are going to uh, the tribunal, tribunal to uh, look at their case. And you know what has happened with the presidential uh, case decided in favor uh, of the sitting president, Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, one key word that a lot of Nigerians are saying uh, uh, is the use of the word technicalities. And we have seen it in many of the cases being determined uh, either at the, federal, at, the, at the federal level for the presidential election or the state or uh, the assembly elections, House of Reps and Senate. How will you describe where we are so far? Uh, we know that many people are now going to uh, either the Supreme Court uh, for the presidential candidate or the Court of Appeal uh, for those in the governorship uh, at CADA. What's your understanding of what is going on? And do you think that this is good for Nigerian democracy? First and foremost, let me state that um, I don't have a monitor here, so you will uh, pardon me if I'm not making the right eye contact, <laughs> even though your director is here. However, the point is very clear. Where we are is not where we should be not after a long exposure to the so-called democracy, uh, return of democracy since to, uh, 1999. It is um, total cacophony. It is total chaos. If you like, the, the metal gong players for the masquerade are playing discord and the masquerade is dancing riotously. And those spectators are just in total confusion. That is a description of what is happening now. Everybody is in total confusion. Nothing is any longer predictable. And when life is not predictable by any sense of reasoning, then it produces conflict not only within the society, but in the persons. And you can see a lot of people are having mental problems. They are not having mental problems. They are having BP problems and ramification of that because they can't make sense out of what is going on. Not in the least when the elderly ones who are supposed to prevail on the society, having benefited from a sane society in their growing up era, are the ones stewing the problems. And they said the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. And I belong to that particular jurisdiction. And it's unfortunate. Perception is everything. Even if there were some mistakes in pronouncements, mistakes in the sense of either not being thorough in the interpretation of the facts and um, using law to garnish them and produce justice. 
The technical justice becomes the outcome. But the perception of the society is that somebody has been compromised. That's the one way traffic. And that's why some people resort to violence. It may not necessarily be that money exchanged hands. While I am not defending anything, but perception is everything. Some of the pronouncements from the courts, the lower courts, especially the tribunals and so on, even at the Court of Appeals, some of them run riot with uh, established principles that have been um, established by the Supreme Court in many decided cases. Some of the easiest refrain by lawyers uh, on the victorious side, quote and unquote, will always be that the election, uh, pet uh, petition, and proceedings are sui generis. They are sui generis. Nothing can be so sui generis to jettison the established principles of law. It is not so. If you are an exceptional student, it means that you pass through the dollars stage, you pass through the average student stage, you pass through the intelligence student stage to become exceptional. You don't jump. That is the, the progression that law makes. Law is not a confused state. It does not promote confusion. It promotes clarity of situations even before they arrive so that it becomes dispassionate even though it behoves the justices and those in the adjudicatory function to dispense justice, yes, sometimes we say according to law, but according to law does not necessarily mean technical justice. Judicial purism, which you may just expect more at the level of the Supreme Court, which is not only uh, a court, it's a, court, a policy court too. It's not just the normal uh, court that follows the the facts and the law as it is. That judicial purism is when you insist that everything must be done as it is written, such that if somebody stole a goat, and this time he steals a cow, it is not supposed to be that he stole a goat last week that should be in before the court today. You should prove that he has stolen a cow. But at the policy level, the court will look at the issue of character. That if this man has always been uh, known to be stealing uh, a goat, we need to send a message that stealing, by whatever time, nature, and place, is not a good thing. That is what the, the Supreme Court will do to correct some of the inanities that we see at the lower courts. So when, we, when you ask me where we are, it cannot be a good place. You can see the society is in total turmoil. Even a child knows when you have uh, satisfied his uh, uh, yearnings and you begin to smile. Maybe smiling and crying may be um, uh, imbued in nature uh, such that the child doesn't have to go to school to learn that. It's reflex. But he certainly knows, you see from the, the demeanor, how happy a child is. So Nigerians are not smiling at all. Mm. And the politicians have perfected this process because when, when you steal good and you are not punished, you will steal cow. And the next time you steal the truck to cut away a cow. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Chima Naji, for setting the tone of the conversation. And I can assure you that your eye contact uh, with us this morning is just thank fine. You. Now, when we look at the ruling of the election tribunal that has been criticized uh, for its heavy reliance on technicalities, as you've rightfully said, some argue that the emphasis on technicalities can sometimes overshadow the substantive issues in election petitions. In your opinion, has this reliance on these technicalities affected the pursuit of justice in post-election cases? And how can the uh, Nigerian judiciary strike a balance between upholding legal standards and ensuring that justice itself is served? My dear, outside politics, our judiciary is doing perfectly well. Politicians have these corruptogenic tendencies. Anything they touch gets corrupted. Most cor politicians, I'm not saying that it's a blanket thing, 
But Nigerian politicians, most politicians, what because the setting is very loose in terms of the, the rules governing the, the politics in this country. It is you who gain power by whatever means that set the rules. And you know the implication. If the man who stole a goat will be the one that will punish those who steal goats, he's either make, he either makes himself an exception that except me, who had stolen like, uh, last week, any other person who stays, if he wants to be magnanimous to the society. So the problem is the society has condoned a lot of infractions and it has become like a norm. And not, no thanks to poverty, because the fear of poverty is the beginning of fraud and corruption. Those who have made it through corrupt practices don't want to go back to their earlier poverty. Those who are still being ravaged by poverty want to escape from it by any means. And so it becomes a rat race. So the point is that the judiciary that is supposed to be the conscience of the nation, if you like, has also been corrupted by politicians. If you dance with somebody who has stomach problem, you are not unlikely to develop stomach tumor you still complain about the same thing. Because when it comes to political cases, the frenetic manner in which they are adjudicated, yes, there is a time uh, limit. Some of these time limits may have been set by the same people who, are, who were intent, I mean at the legislature, who were intent of breaching them. So they know that if they are able to corner the system, game the system, that the, the, the petitioner may not be able to achieve certain uh, rule. Not, we thank God for this 2022 uh, Electoral Act. In the 2020, uh, 2006 Act, under which some of us contested, you, you couldn't just go to court if you knew the law because you were the one that would prove that there was uh, no election. And the presumption of regularity that inured with the institution will cover it with every type, type of uh, a blanket, and you will definitely lose. That is why some people who are still doing such things now will always tell you, go to court. Nothing will come out of it. But if you manage to manage your process, reduce the area of your focus, and don't go for omnibus petition, you might just get the result under this act, because it is more novel than the 2006 and the 2010 Electoral Act. So the judiciary itself that is focusing on technical justice is not doing the society any good. You cannot close your eye that what is at, the, at, the, at, at issue here is not the corruption or corrupt practices of the, the, the man declared winner or the fact that he had a, a problem with his character or that like in one of the, the cases that NYC certificates <laughs> are no longer part of the electoral process. That it is not necessary. Mm. That is a bizarre decision. Mm. But I leave that to the lawyers in the, in, in the team of uh, the petitioners to see what they can do. It's an, appellable, it's an appellable ground. Even if it does not necessarily end up reversing the election of uh, the 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 person declared winner, they need to make, the Supreme Court needs to make a more categorical statement. It is established, but it needs to be re-emphasized for, 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 for sake of uh, our sanity, judicial sanity. All right, Dr. Naji, um, I, I have two questions for you. Uh, first is that when you, uh, when you term what is going on as technical judiciary uh, or judicial technicalities, uh, I know how disappointing it might be uh, the outcome of um, the ruling uh, for the presidential election might be uh, for many people, uh, but uh, it was also applauded by other Nigerians, you know, given the side of the political divide that they belong to. But uh, in other jurisdictions, especially in the States, uh, we can see that, you know, uh, the, the sort of rulings that we are getting uh, is not so one way and not so direct in terms of uh, uh, technicalities. Uh, look at Plateau, for example, 
uh, the, uh, the tribunal says, you know, uh, uh, the gentleman there uh, was validly elected for PDP. The same thing in Enugu, which you have tried to, you know, uh, double into, which I'm still coming, you know, to. So, uh, and if you look at the, um, uh, for House of Reps, for Senate, uh, it has affected, rulings have affected practically all the parties. Uh, those who will have to go back for uh, a, a, a runoff, as you will have in Lagos in some uh, constituency. Others are basically, so it, it hasn't been uh, that a single party is favored. You might want to look at Kano and say that the only state that NMPC has, has gone to um, uh, APC. Uh, but then uh, there are other states like Enugu, like uh, Plateau, uh, that those who won for other parties are retaining. So I I'm saying, are you still, you, will you still think uh, that it's as a result of compromise that we have had the sort of release that we have had, even when other parties outside of the, of the uh, ruling party are winning at the tribunal? Uh, the second leg of my question uh, is, can you speak to us more directly uh, about the ruling of the tribunal for Endugu State, given that a major component of that uh, uh, petition uh, was the uh, uh, fake or alleged, alleged fake um, NYSC certificate of uh, the governor, uh, Mr. Peter Mba. Uh, you are from Enugu State yourself. You once aspired to be governor of the state. Is this the type of a ruling that will be satisfactory to you as an individual and to many people uh, of Enugu State, for example? Well, let me uh, start with the first question. I have not insinuated here that there might have been a comprom compromise based on material inducement. I have no evidence to establish that. And as a lawyer, I should not make that uh, statement. Even if I have certain hunches, that should be personal to me. So I will not converse that. But I used the word perception. The way you see things may not be the way I see things. That perception may be right, it may be wrong. And it is the perception that public relations officers manage to make sure that even if you have no facts about them, they furnish you the facts of what is happening so that they will look good before you. Even in the event something is done wrong, they explain it away so that you can understand and agree with their own uh, the angle of uh, that explanation. So the perception has not been right, and INEC has not encouraged people to think otherwise. So why, why I'm not going to say compromise? Just for the same reason that you said uh, you, 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 give, you win some, you lose some, if we are talking about the party uh, in power. The principles of law have not been properly applied across the board in some cases. There are some cases that may have come out because I have not read all the judgments, but I've got snippets. Uh, if you are a good doctor, you should be able to know a malaria patient without carrying out a test, just by asking, what, how do you feel, how do you feel, and you look the person and all. So you don't need to even go through the, uh, the test to completely uh, convince yourself. So as a lawyer, I, I look at the judgment, I look at the grounds, I look at the, 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 the pleading, I look at the decision. Some of these things are based on logic. You know, it's logic and fact. So the, 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 the tribunals across the country have given different judgments, and you see different reactions. Even somebody who stole a goat and is on video, some members of his family will be jubilating, you know? don't get that mixed up. Because some of them may not have taken pepper soup for some time. So they are looking at the goat vis-a-vis -vis the thing they will get from that goat, not about the stealing aspect or the moral angle. So at any instance, every political party that is declared winner whether it won at the normal election, in fact, the noise will become better and higher if indeed the election of the right person is overturned because the, the majority may not be so boisterous, but the minority 
being better coordinated can be very thunderous in their <clears throat> outing. Now, if that is the case, the point we are making that generally there should be no fixation on this thing called technical justice. There are, if you, if you only, as a butcher, you are more interested in the skeleton, nobody will come to your shed. You must put flesh. Justice does not know faces. It does not know creed. It does not know class. Nor does it know uh, ethnicity or tribe. It is just an objective reality that is applied to the real situation. But in doing so, whereas the judge is not allowed to bring his own personal predilection, he has to factor in all the factors. Even if you end up that you must be going to Shagamu, you must realize that there was masquerade at Ojota. You must realize that there was also something that disturbed the movement of this person that would have arrived at uh, Shagamu first. But that the law says at the end of the day, it is the person who comes to Shagamu first that must be there. Everybody will be assuaged. I don't know whether you are getting my drift. Yes. Sir. But to cut it hard and dry, to cut it hard and dry, it will leave the people outside there hamstrung. The judges may not have voted. The justices may not have watched television the day election was going on. It becomes so pernicious for the electors who went there to go through the, the bullets that have become the, the characteristics of uh, our elections. For the voters who went there in the sun or the rain at the risk and opportunity cost of every other thing in their life to queue up. And they saw things happen. And you tell them that what the petitioner articulating their views and interests have brought is nonsense. It, it is painful. As a lawyer, it is painful. It is not justifiable. You, you must factor in everything and arrive at your decision nevertheless. You must recognize that this man who is not tall must, must have lost the opportunity of plucking the mango because his own stick could not make it. But you can see, I am not God. The taller man has had it. So you just have to uh, take care of yourself and all. the man will be happy that is not you he recognize his own deficiency you didn't impose it you see my dear the hunchback man is annoyed when you call him hunchback because you are reminding him his deficiency and the load is carrying why do you have to do that leave him to his fate give him what is due to him don't remind him his own deficiencies so these are some of the issues about perception coming to a Nugu state and of course, you know, like you mentioned, uh, um, um, Plato State and some other states. Some of the cases are pre-election things. But I believe some, some um, petitioners may also have asked, you try, you gamble. Some of them may not have done the best that they could do. But that is also the reason why the judges are there. A judge should not be angry with petitioner. Or petitioners because that's the reason why they are there and that's the reason why they are paid just like I told somebody who was throwing uh, small things on the main road and they started fighting one day I say in as much as you should not have thrown it but this loma person you should not fight the person because that's why you are paid mm. okay that's in the lighter mode but it's a more serious issue if a judge sits at the at the height of that advantaged uh, or vantage position to talk down at lawyers who may be senior to them in the manner in a condescending manner it is not right because they will not reply other than yeah, go to appeal it doesn't be psychologically these other people are damaged ordinarily if you do that to a judge they will say that you've committed uh, 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 infraction in, in the face of court contact and all that so that which you do not want to absorb, don't give it to others if you think it's not good. All right, With respect to the case of Enugu and the certificate, am I on? Okay, yes, yes, you are on. Yes, please make your point, sir. Am I? Yes, you are. Very well. Yes. With respect, with respect to Enugu, Enugu state case 
uh, whether it was uh, what I expected or what I should have had, you know, I've just mentioned that 2006 Electoral Act is quite different from even 2010. And the marked difference from 2022, because there are a lot of developments even in the polity that have happened to make it difficult for one single person to do a number of things. Don't forget that some people who did things in 2006 and 2010 uh, and 2007, uh, 2007 and 2011, there, some of them have migrated, having done their primary assignment in the previous parties. They are now in their new party as graduates. So they have perfected the situation and the system, and they are doing it in such uh, in, in, uh, some kind of proven uh, um, impunity. What can you do? Go to court. Because, yes, courts are there because they think that uh, there are certain technicalities that you may not navigate within the constraint of time. Take the case of a uh, Labour Party, for example, and the PDP. The argument part and forth they were going with uh, INEC until time it fluxed and everything is time bound. And the, the, ju the, the, the judges will not elongate the time necessarily because there is a constitutional bar. There is a statutory bar to what they can do. And the judge can only operate within the framework of law. So if INEC frustrated that, then it throws up issues for, uh, for uh, law reform. What is the role of INEC? Should INEC be a defendant in a case like that, or just remain an umpire? Because if you make INEC uh, a defendant, it begins to defend itself and goes in cahoot with those it declared and begin to undo the petitioner. So these are areas that call for uh, law reform, but that is a different matter altogether. Coming to the case of Enugu, it is very difficult if, because I have not read that judgment in full, you know, for you to come to a particular conclusion, you may not, you may want to go through the entire thing, but it is busier to hear that their lordships pronounced that uh, NYC certificate is not uh, a necessary condition for, for, for election. I beg to disagree because if you have thrown in the degree certificate or like that uh, LLB that Peter has uh, thrown in, then you have activated the NYC conditionalities. If you threw in school SAT, because I am not aware of any law that says that if you have five degrees and you had good certificate at the school SAT, that you cannot rely on your school SAT since that is the minimum, in fact, not even school SAT, school leaving, yeah, because uh, some people have G4. And uh, you, even some people, the, 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 uh, the final leg of that uh, conditionality said that if you have school, first school leaving certificate and you have 10 years experience or whatever, that is how low the standard for our governance is. While you want a PhD holder to teach in the universities, you want a, a, a nondescript personality to hang around at the state houses or even the, the, uh, the presidential palace. It, it is uh, completely in, uh, in, uh, unacceptable in today's Nigeria, lowering, lowering the bar. So NYC certificate is very important if you are a graduate because what it shows is that you have served your fatherland, which is a condition precedent for you to go for public office in this country. Not to do otherwise is to shoot ourselves on the foot and open a floodgate of impunities. Right. Even people are still battling the minister uh, under the, the Tinubu administration that is still doing her NYC and she's appointed. Not to talk about uh, whether the, 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 the candidate did the NYC some years back. If Peter, uh, if Peter Mba proves that he has gone for NYC, and it is accepted that it is not forgery. That is not my problem. My problem is to make a judicial pronouncement that it is not necessary. 
That is bizarre pronouncement. And it's unacceptable because I believe it will be challenged <clears throat> and should be challenged for better pronouncement for court to know the jurisdiction on the issue of certificates tendered at um, elections. All right. Particularly, NYC certificate conditionality is pervasive. It's not like that you have PhD and you didn't tender it, uh, file it along. You, are, you, have no, you have no reason to bring your PhD certificate if you have only school certificate uh, you tendered. The law, once you meet the minimum requirement, but once you say you are a graduate, you automatically activate the NYC conditionalities. That is the, the, the fact, and that is the law. Anything to the contrary should be tested at the Supreme Court. Absolutely. So we want to And think... it is immaterial right. whether at the end of the day, yes. whether at the end of the day Peter is declared the winner. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that the fact, the truth should be told and the position of the law must be clarified. Okay. All right, Dr. Chima Naji, we want to thank you so much for all the clarifications on the morning show today. Thank you indeed.